Real nigga salutation across the motherfucking nation. Here we go. Open and you are now experiencing the world famous Ball Smack Podcast. A R N S y'all. R N motherfucking S. Oh yes. Today is a beautiful day. I'm happy as fuck to be up in here doing this. You already know how I came to get down Beautiful motherfucking vibrations all around Fuck with the ball smack top soil one time God bless y'all man, let me tell you something man I hope these words are reaching y'all motherfuckers in good vibration and health i hope everybody is good i hope everything is all right i hope you're getting money i hope everything is good the ball smack top motherfucking soil is here for you right now extra motherfucking relicent in the motherfucking flesh here to spit nothing but high quality game all the way across the board, man. Let me tell you, man. And you already know that the show is brought to you by Ball Smack Streetwear. Go through Ball Smack Streetwear and cop shit like what I got on right now. We make bomb ass shit for y'all motherfuckers. Let me tell you something. I put game on the shirt to make bitches want to flirt. You rock some ball, smack top soil. You go out there, you move around. Bitches will see you and notice you and be like, can I take a picture with you? Can I take a picture of your shirt? And let me tell you right there, if that ain't an opening for you to begin conversation if you want to. Yeah, hear me? Even in front of your bitch. You could be out with your bitch and another bitch will say, hey, that's a real nice shirt. Can I take a picture of that? In front of your bitch, up in your status, man. Ball Smack has been here for y'all niggas the whole time, man. But niggas don't, don't even see it like that. Let me tell you something. Fuck with Ball Smack Top Soil, you hear me, man? And also, if you need some extra game, if you need some extra game, you're trying to get an upper hand on them bitches in your life, I gives a fuck what you think. The Ball Smack Top Soil is looking at your shit like a motherfucking coach overview from the motherfucking top of the dome looking down on the game. I already seen the play the bitch running on you. I got the play for you to help you score for sure. The ball smack topsoil is one of the greatest that ever was able to deliver high quality game to motherfuckers, man, that was receptive for it. Let me tell you, man, and see one thing about the game, man. The game is fucked up, man. The game... The game ain't nothing but reality, man. It ain't like I'm telling you nothing special, different, uh, way out of the ordinary, man. The game is reality. The game is sometimes real hard, cold facts and shit, man. Like, I might tell you, man, you got to leave that bitch alone. I might tell you, hey, man, you know what? You got to fire that bitch right now. Or I might tell you, you know what, man? You need to go add another bitch on the team and let that bitch see that other bitch on your team. You know what I mean, man? It's difficult things I'm going to tell you to do, man. It ain't the ordinary type of game because it's a lot of niggas out here say they got 
got game and say they spitting game, but I ain't seen them with nothing, bitch. And let me tell you something, man. Niggas know the ball smack topsoil and have seen the ball smack topsoil with many a bitch through the year. You understand me? And I got game for real. But I ain't trying to I ain't trying to break it over your head. If you don't want to fuck with me, I get it. But I'm going to tell you, man, if you need some game, get at me. I know I went on a tangent right there, but I wanted y'all niggas to really catch the vibration and feel it and look into a nigga eye, soul, and understand that I'm not fucking around out here, man. The game is real, and you got to understand the deal. Hmm? All right, y'all. Niggas in the motherfucking news. Niggas in the motherfucking news. And, you know, it's always niggas in the news. Niggas is continuously in the news. Niggas cannot stop being in the news. And niggas need to stay out the news like the little, like my bro Boogaloo be saying. Niggas need to stay out the news, but they stay in the news. And that's why we got niggas in the news right now. And our first nigga in the news, man, you know what? I got to talk about Tory Lanez, man. I got to talk about Tory Lanez, man. Tory Lanez. And as I begin to talk about Tory Lanez, I want to introduce niggas to a, a, a concept. I'm going I'm to I'm introduce a word into the uh, real nigga lexicon to, to go abroad, all around. This is, this is some etymology. Is that what they, the, 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 the origin of words, etymology and shit? Is that what, it, what they call it? I got some etymology for niggas. Inspired by your boy Tory Lanez, man, because uh, I remember when I first introduced here the sucker attack for niggas. Feel free to use that uh, as a term to describe when you are overwhelmed by emotional impulses and you do sucker shit that is detrimental to your motherfucking self and um it is very unman it is it is very unreal nigga like to have a sucker attack we preach from uh, you know me and my peoples you know the boss back topsoil bompton soil nella uh terrace town you understand me terrace town hustlers niggas uh from my peoples you know this uh term originate sucker attack the sucker attack we use it to describe uh when the homies do some sucker you nigga you had a motherfucking sucker attack this nigga had a sucker attack you understand me tory lane sucker attack now this new term i'm gonna put out there man see when you repeatedly do sucker shit around me and my peoples when you repeatedly do sucker shit around me and my peoples we call you sucker foot you understand me because yo you keep stepping and sucker shit you got a sucker foot your foot your foot is sucker like you step every time you do something when you move around you just do sucker shit you hear me so sucker foot tory lanes is sucker foot you understand me Cause um, I'm, you know, I, you know, I always want to give a nigga benefit of the doubt. You know, I, I praise real niggas, man. I want niggas to win. Hear me? I'm for, I'm for, I'm for shitty treatment of bitches. You understand me? And when I say that, that mean that I, I'm not for sucker shit, man. I'm not for, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm against emotional displays in front of bitches. You know what I'm talking about? Crying, anger, all of that type of shit right there. Tears in front of bitches, bursts of anger at the bitch. You know what I'm saying? It's different if you bursting in anger at a nigga because you, you know, you got to defend yourself in front of the bitch. But a burst of anger at the bitch and pull out a gun. Okay, let's talk about it. Let me let me vibe. Tory Lane sucker foot. Why is he sucker foot? 
for the life of me, man, I'm, I'm, I'm digging deep into my brain trying to understand the thinking processes of a nigga who would uh, shoot. Okay. The nigga would have a gun. Okay. Pull it out and shoot around a bitch. Being a famous, a famous R&B rapper motherfucker. Good. Just came off a of quarantine radio. Nigga is popping, right? And the nigga just uh, in a rage uh, shoot at a bitch, around a bitch foot. Pull a trigger on the gun. Have a gun in California from Canada. Not supposed to have a gun ass nigga out here nigga listen i don't know there is nothing that a, that a, there is no nothing that a bitch could have did if a bitch reached up from the back seat and slapped the shit out of him twice you hear me if she called him a short ass motherfucker little dick if 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 the other bitch uh said she was fu- whatever happened there is no, there is no, there is no, you shot a gun. You shot a gun, nigga. You, you took felony, you did a felony, took felony chances in a, in a, in anger at a bitch for some reason. You know what I'm saying? And you ain't a criminal living in a criminal environment where you got to do criminal gangster shit regularly. So... Sucker foot. Now a nigga do that, and then record a whole fucking album. Put the album out, then get out here moving around happily, while the motherfucking LAPD, motherfucking LA district attorney, is hovering with charges and a nigga and the bitch then already came out and said that the nigga shot her I'm a, I'm, I'm I, who is around this nigga who is around Tory Lanez Tory Lanez if you can hear my voice nigga you got stupid dumb motherfuckers around you advising you stupid nigga you need real nigga help nigga I don't know what the fuck. Nigga put out a out nigga. Obviously, this nigga ain't been down there to that LA courthouse on um 210 Temple in downtown Los Angeles where they ain't giving a fuck up in that building, nigga. When you get up in there, nigga, you get up in there, nigga, with some charges, nigga. You nigga. That motherfucker will open up into the penitentiary for you. You understand me? That motherfucker will open up into the penitentiary for you. You you go right into the penitentiary from right in there. Fucking around in that building, nigga. You don't want to. You do not. You want to get clear of that building, nigga. When, when they was hovering charges over you, you should have went into disappeared. I don't know why you did not try to give that bitch some hundreds of thousands of dollars to shut the fuck up. What the fuck is going on, man? Why was not a why why didn't somebody from his why didn't this nigga say, you know what, instead of making an album, let me scrape up two, three hundred thousand to give to a bitch to get up off of me and ple- and beg forgiveness and try to get up out of there with just had a gun charge you understand me and hopefully they slap me on the hand super hard and i can get some probation and get the fuck out of this motherfucker sucker foot the legend of sucker foot when you see a nigga keep doing sucker shit repeatedly you call him sucker foot that's sucker foot 
that's the homie dr came up. i i heard the homie dr use that first the homie dr roadie tootie uh from the hood you know my people my close people you know when we be when we be real nigga talking but y'all sucker ass niggas out here man that's how we that's how we call it sucker foot sucker foot ass nigga man wow nigga put out a whole motherfucking album nigga put out a whole album and just get some charges like a motherfucker and then go straight to prison on some <laughs> y'all niggas is ridiculous man fantasy fuck man shit crazy anyway our next nigga in the motherfucking nose um let me look at the fucking notes you know i got notes you know the ball smack be keeping notes like a motherfucker be keeping notes like a motherfucker all right uh blue face shout out to blue face the homie blue face blue face is uh i'm gonna tell you man blue face is really doing a lot of outstanding things with bitches in my opinion right now i want to really commend the youngster man out of all the youngsters out there man he really show you how to work with bitches man this nigga really be doing his thing man just the blue face pimp show man we definitely i'm gonna have to definitely try. i guess it's on um on on only fans man the nigga got bitches boxing bitches fighting bitches bitches uh bitches catching passes going out bitches bitches playing <laughs> oh man bitches bitches fighting bitches doing anything to be around the pimping i i love it shout out to blue face man i remember i saw blue face starting to blow up man and I was trying to hurry. Oh, man, I lagged. I was going to go ahead and try to see if I can get that nigga on. I seen him blowing up. I tried. I was going to try to get him. I remember he was charging a rack for a show, man. I was like, man, I'm going to try to book this motherfucker for a little show and and um, get him on the podcast. Man, that nigga was gone. Boom. Out of here. Anyway, shout out to Blueface in the Pimp Show, man. Y'all got to check that out. Good good uh you, you see a nigga really going through bitches man handling bitches man Dollars right now. Honey, only going to hundred dollars right now. <laughs> and fucking intelligent like ain't no dick ride straight up oh he's strong yeah he's the strongest fucking man in the world the strongest no real down to earth real down to earth listen rich niggas be bougie as fuck rich niggas be so fucking bougie but like he's just a regular ass nigga like and he acknowledges Oh yeah, they gonna squabble. Nah, I'm playing. They not. I'm playing. Alright, you can bring it up. Got you a smoothie. 
You okay? All right, let me put her in the car. All right. For me? Please. I got you. Rock head out. No, keep your legs up. Keep your legs up. Keep your legs up so she can push you. It's okay. It's not about the money. We're going to fix your teeth. Don't worry. That's a beautiful thing, man. All right, now. Another nigga in the news. Now, I want to shout out this nigga, Mano, and the Kitchen Talk. Man, I, I like they podcast. I've been fucking with they podcast. Shout out to Mano. He came on there and... um. And, um, and 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 shit it on K Michelle and said her pussy stank and that really ain't the first time he put that out there but you know it was it was still entertaining the way they brought it up and um, I like uh, I like the interaction with his boy Kenny Hustle Hard the uh, you know what I'm saying is Mano Hustle Hard and Kenny Hustle Hard I think. I like the Kenny Hustle hard. You know, they tell, let me, you know, when I see niggas, when I see niggas, um, and I see the, uh, and I see, I see the niggas that be rolling with the nigga. And you see the nigga that be rolling with the nigga is a solid nigga. That's, that say a lot about the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that say a lot about Mano. He got a solid, right hand nigga you know what i'm saying you know i like them niggas but any and i like the i like the bitch co-host georgie man i like her too i like her vibe but anyway he shitted on bitches with uh um bitches with uh what the what the what to do he 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 just said he was offended that a bitch like k michelle pussy would be stinking right he was offended that a bitch like K. Michelle Pussy would be stinking, right? And like, why was her pussy stinking? Now, see, that goes in multiple dimensions. That goes in multiple dimensions. That goes in multiple dimensions. That goes. Look, I personally know bitches who will who 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 would. Bitches in the past that I've known that would do that to you. Like on some on some nigga just take that type of shit. And if you take it, what's that saying about you? You know what I'm saying? What's that saying about you? Now you could you could you could approach it different ways. You could be like you could be like um in your mind, oh man, this bitch pussy stank. Now, in your mind, you clowning a bitch. You in your mind, you know, you you already clowning a bitch. When you get a break, you ready to get on the phone and call the homie and be like, damn, this bitch pussy stinking. Or like, like that's what Mano said he did. He got on the phone and called his boy, this bitch pussy stank. And then this boy told him, said, man, go back in there and make sure that the pussy stink, right? Now, that go multiple ways. That go multiple ways. See? You could say, you could say, shame on the bitch, right? You could say shame on the bitch, but you still, if you still fuck, is it shame on the bitch? If you still fuck is a shame on a bitch. Because here's what I've done. The ball smack top soil have said, hey man, the pussy is stinking. And fucked up the whole moments. Fuck the pussy. Hey, you know what? I'm not, I you know what? I'm not that thirsty to go through with it. I'm not that thirsty to go through with it. 
I can't go through with it. I got to ruin everything right now. Fuck it. Fuck it. Hey, man, the pussy's stinking. Let's argue. Let's have, let's, let's do it. Let's, all the moment is gone. Whatever, whatever momentum, whatever sexual momentum, whatever was happening, whatever it was, the cover fanned up. I caught that. It ain't me. Is that me? And my balls, you know, that's my method. Is that my ball stinking? Is that my ball stinking? What the fuck? That's you. Your pussy stinking. It's lit right now. It's lit. It's lit, baby. It's lit. What you gonna do? You get up and go wash the pussy. Go get up and go take a shower. Face it like a woman. Well, nigga, let me tell you. The times that that shit happened to me, that shit went like this. The bitch, j- bitch was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Got up and took a whole shower. Then I had times where I was like, fuck it, man. It's, it's all bad. I'm bull. I'm fuck it. I'm bull. Let let's let let's let it let's let it let's let it all let's fuck it. It's known that's what it was. That's why I stopped. Let's let it be the beef. But see, because a bitch famous. Let me tell you, man. Let me tell you, man. Let me tell you, man. I shit on a famous bitch for that. I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do that shit. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to go through with it and then say, oh, man, her pussy was stinking after I fucked her. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect Mano either, but I'm not. I'm going I'm to I'm fuck it all. I'm a, it's going to be fucked up before. I'm going to be like, wow, your pussy stinking. So what? So what was and then I'm a, then I'm going to come at a bitch with like, so. You. So basically, this was like since you since you since you popping. I'ma just take this because you popping. Man, man. Tell you, man. All that older shit, man. That you know it how can I there's no I'm not I I do fucked up shit to bitches, man. I I, I didn't do some fucked up shit to bitches, bro. Fuck that. It's fuck it. I don't want no pussy now. Be mad, bitch. Be. I'm mad that you did this to me, bitch. I'm mad that you did this to me. Like what the fuck? Why me, bitch? You knew this. It's no way you didn't know. Shout out to Maino Hustle Hard though, man. You know, and K Michelle and her Dookie Pussy and shit. K Michelle Dookie Pussy. All right now. You know what, man? I wanna I wanna another nigga in the news. Y'all might not know this nigga, man, but this nigga Devin Wade, man. And Devin Wade is a nigga that used to be on the million dollars worth of game podcast. And I've been fucking with his podcast here and there, looking at his podcast, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, that motherfucker, imagination is a motherfucker, man. That motherfucker's imagination is a motherfucker, man. That nigga podcast setup is some bizarre shit, man. That nigga got, that nigga paying for hoes. He paying for, (laughs) paying for hoes in the background. Got the DJ, got two or three, four, about three or four niggas, and he liked the, he liked the, he, that shit brazy, man. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm out here talking shit. She ain't doing nothing about it. Mm. Talking shit. Oh, she. It looked like it. it no, like no, 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 no. <laughs> that don't mean chill out. Oh, no, chill yeah, out, yeah, yo. Chill yeah, out. Chill yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, hey, yo, I'm sorry. Hey, yo, 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 yo
Holy shit. Holy shit. This gonna get crazy. I told you that boy got kidnapped. Oh, Look. oh shit. Bend. Bend over. Oh shit. I ain't bending over. Hold on. What's going on? <laughs> What's Yo, going on? Just tell me to respect. Wow. You gotta respect their laws, bro. Respect tied. Yeah, man. You heard of? You hear? Blow it out your ass. That's what I said. Hey, yo, yo, yo. We got to figure out where my shit at. We got we got to figure out a safe way because you're not just going to be slapping me all willy-nilly like this. You're going to start respecting me? No. <laughs> <laughs> all that means, all that he means is that, that he really space. wanted. Shout out to Devin Wade, man, in his war against Gilly the Kid. And shout out to the million dollars worth the game podcast had Big U and um Whack One Hundred on there. Cuz representing the, the blue rag. So after about 7980, it mm -hmm. went to where the word B L O D stood for the red side. Mm -hmm. And so but the Pyrus was a stiff they was a street out of Compton. And they started forming that after the Crips too again. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen, we won't take away from Crips was <coughs> here. Amen. And they was really here. Amen. Wait, wait, they was really here to protect the communities, right? Against some other shit. Right? Is that right? They was protecting the community? Amen. Against some other shit, right? But ain't no Crips came over there and Preach, said, Lord, preach. Hey, listen, we want y'all to be the power rule Amen. of the blood. Amen. And um, Wack 100 spit some good game. Wack 100 was on that talking game. Uh, yeah, it was a trip seeing that real nigga energy on uh, on the million dollars worth of game. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all be perceiving those small things like that, the different energies and shit. When niggas be around, that should be brazy to me. All right, now, another nigga in the news. I know y'all niggas ain't fucking with this shit, man, but this, I thought this was some good shit. I like this shit. I like this shit. I like this shit. The bitches from the hell, from the Call Me Daddy podcast. The bitches from the Call Me Daddy podcast. Now, it was the it was a blonde bitch and it was a bitch with dark hair. I, the bitch with dark hair named Sophia. I don't know the blonde bitch's name, but the blonde bitch ended up keeping the um, Call Me Daddy um, podcast itself. And then the Sophia bitch broke off and she got her own shit now. Now, you know, I've been hearing the blind bitch side of the shit the whole time, you know. And she kind of was pointing at the, the 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 Sophia bitch saying that a nigga came into the picture and fucked up their podcast and corrupted their relationship and shit went left. I ain't gonna lie, man. Those bitches is dope. Those bitches is dope. I like those bitches. The Sophia bitch, she came back with her podcast, and I listened to her shit, and her shit was fire. She came with thirty nine minutes of fire for the blonde, for the blonde bitch. These little white bitches is ruthless, man. These little white bitches is ruthless. The little white bitch is funny, bro. That y'all gotta check that out. The little bitch just man, that shit brazy, man. She said motherfuckers be right motherfuckers be writing. Like motherfuckers be uh I guess yeah, motherfuckers be having shit written for them. Like I didn't know that. I I don't know why I didn't think that that was possible. I I don't know why I didn't think that type of shit, but Shout out to that, man. Like, shout out to them bitches in their war, man. Y'all fuck with them white bitches, man. Call me daddy bitches. And the Sophia with a F bitches. All right. I want to talk about my nigga Young Jeezy. 
Young Jeezy in the news. His bitch, uh, Jenny Ma, I think that's her name. That bitch came out and said, did a testimony or say she gonna submission to a nigga. She gonna submit to her nigga. I'ma submit to my man. I, I'm I'ma do it. I, she did a speech. She did a video testimonial. And bitches is hot out here. Black bitches is hot. Black bitches is mad at that shit. They mad. They don't like it. They like bitch. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck. <laughs> hey. And look, in her first relationship that she had, the bitch that's married to uh, Young Jeezy, what's her name, Jenny Ma? I think that's her name. She was married to a white man. And she just gave orders and shit, right? But now she married to a nigga. And she said, I bowed down. I bowed down to this nigga. I'm bowing down. Whatever he say, I'm when I'm at the when I'm out when I'm at the job, I'm the boss. When I'm at my job, I'm the boss. But when I come home, I'm bowing down. Bitches don't like it. Bitches don't like it. And bitches' slogan is this: I cannot bow down until you prove it. You gotta prove it, bruh. You gotta prove it. You gotta prove it. You gotta prove it. You got to prove it. And I'm going to tell you, man, on some real shit, I'm going to say some fucked up shit right now to niggas that ain't going to motherfucking niggas. The niggas, the niggas should really uh, consider, man. Niggas should really consider this. This is what, this is the reality of the world. You see, you really, you really, um, I heard, I heard another bit. I heard my homie, my homie bitch did that. Um, one of my people's, his bitch did that at the, at their wedding when they got married. Um, she really did that. And I felt that she just, she just, that bitch just went off like a, uh, that bitch just, um, had some type of poem or some type of statement it's like she read an oath. She was just like, listen up here, nigga. I don't give a fuck. You the leader. You the king. I'm following all the orders. You's a real ass nigga. All this shit in the wedding, man. It was some, it was some way out shit, man. I really appreciated it. And, and I'm going to say this, man. My nigga, you should not. You, you, you should not even have no bitch. If your bitch don't bow down like that, like just really just be like, nigga, you the nigga. You the nigga, nigga. If your bitch don't just give you that, you shouldn't fuck with her. If she don't want to just give you that, and you should be like, you should you should let a bitch go and say, I, I'm going to free you so you could get with a nigga that inspire you to give that type of respect and honoring. You understand me around this motherfucker, man. Cause I'm about that homage, man. I don't even. I'm gonna tell you, man. I'm so far beyond. I'm so far be. See, to me, um, pussy ain't homage. Pussy ain't homage. Pussy ain't homage. You know, a lot of niggas, y'all niggas, is pussy is a homage. Pussy is. is not a homage the homage is the goods and the services and the respect the, the admirations the substance the giving of substance the increasing of the substance does your bitch increase your substance or deplete your substance I seen a whole it's a podcast out there with bitches just discussing about how they deplete multiple niggas substance their whole podcast is based off of them depleting multiple niggas 
substance without giving anything and that's all to the good but if your bitch does not do what young jeezy bitch did i suggest i i pursue you don't have no bitch you don't have no bitch if your bitch don't bow down like that i don't give a fuck if you're married y'all got a house ice diamonds kids and shit if your bitch don't bow down to you like that you don't really have no bitch you feel me beautiful thing young jeezy got right there shout out to that right there shout out to that right there another nigga in the news hey man listen i don't know what the fuck is going on out here man but i'm gonna tell you man I kind of don't want to show this, but then again, I want to show this because I believe that, um, I believe niggas need to be aware of these things because like I said, I believe there's, uh, there's evil in this world. There's real evil in this world. You understand me? And, um, Take this for instance. Three white men in the news. Fucking animals and taping it. Three Pennsylvania men now face more than 1,400 counts of having sex with animals. 41-year-old Terry Wallace, 34-year-old Mark Niesenkoff, and 32-year-old Matthew Brubaker are also charged with cruelty to animals, endangering the welfare of children and corruption of minors. A 16-year-old boy living on a makeshift farm on Mouse Lane in Munson, Pennsylvania, told police the abused animals included dogs, horses, a cow, and a goat. According to the Clearfield County District Attorney's Office, the teen has been placed into protective custody. A search of the property turned up a large volume of homemade videos, recording equipment, and cameras. All three men have preliminary hearings scheduled for fucking a whole bunch of animals and taping it and then tried to indoctrinate a, a little white boy into another a fourth motherfucker that was a minor into this lifestyle of fucking animals now you know this is white people bro like this is white people shit right here bro I mean, you know, I'm not, you know, I keep going back to, you know, niggas want to get mad at me. I'll be like, hey, man, you know, I, I just believe they the Nephilim, man. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say they all evil, man. They the Nephilim, though, bro. Like, that's in the Bible. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through uh, 3, bro. You read it right there, man. It just. You know what I mean? Be bestiality, bro. Like, who does that? What? What's the? What's the? What's the motivation? What's what? It. That's evil. Demonic, evil, evil, right there, bro. It's it's just a whole lot of. It. It's just a whole lot out there, man. It's a whole lot out there. You know what? You know what, man? Uh, I want to read some shit to y'all niggas, man. I got some other shit I could talk about. But I want to read some shit to y'all niggas, man. And... Another book that I think is pretty dope for niggas is uh I'll be fucking with Socrates, man. I I you know so crates, bro. Like I'll be fucking with Socrates, man. You know. It's a whole bunch of different well not it's not a whole bunch of different. This is really only a few. It's you got Plato's version of Socrates, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and you know, that includes books like the Apology and the Symposium and the Republic and shit like that. 
Gorgias. I like Gorgias. That's pretty dope. Socrates, bro. Dope. Dope cat. But anyway, Xenophon also wrote about Socrates. Xenophon also wrote about Socrates. And, you know, I, I got a short vignette that I would just like to read from Socrates, man, and just fuck going on outside, man. I would just like to read some shit, man. Now, this is my beat up, my book, because I done read it so much, I done beat this motherfucker up. But this is a this is a vignette from Socrates. I just want to flow and glow for y'all niggas and see if y'all can vibe with this and catch this. And, and hopefully it's clear and hopefully I can read this good. You understand me? Let me flow. Feel me. This is the Conversations of Socrates, Memoirs of Socrates by Xenophon. It's the uh, estate manager also, which is game. Follow me now. At one time in the city, wait, at one time there was in the city a beautiful woman called Theode, who was the sort to concert with anyone persuasive. One of the company had mentioned her and remarked her beauty was beyond description. He added that artists visited her to paint her picture and that she had let them see as much of her that was proper. We ought to go see her, said Socrates. We can't form a clear idea about what is beyond description from hearsay. The sooner you all come with me, the better, said the informant. So they went off to see Theode. Found her posing for a painter and took a good look at her. When the painter had finished, Socrates said, gentlemen, we ought to be more grateful to Theode for letting us see her beauty or she to us for looking at her. I suggest that if the display has been more, I suggest that if the display has been more to her advantage, she ought to be grateful to us if the sight has been more to ours. We ought to be grateful to her. Somebody said, that's right. Well, then he went on. She is already enjoying the tribute of our admi admiration. And when we have spread our report, she will benefit further. On the other hand, we are now desirous of touching what we have seen. We shall go away with our emotions. Titillated. And when we have gone, we shall feel an unsatisfied longing. The natural inference from this is that we are performing the service and she is receiving it. I must say, said Theode, if that's how it is, I should have to be grateful to you for looking at me. Socrates could see that she was expensively got up and that she had her mother with her, dressed in a raid in no casual manner, and several pretty maids in attendance who similarly showed no signs of neglect, and that the house was lavishly appointed in all other respects. So he now said, tell me, Theode, have you got a farm? Not I, she said. Then, well then, a house that brings in money nor a house perhaps you have some slaves who work at a craft no none then how do you support yourself if anyone gets friendly with me and wants to be generous that's how i get my living good heavens theody said socrates it is a splendid asset to have a flock of friends much better than to have a flock of sheep and goats and cattle but tell me do you leave it to chance whether a friend wings his way towards you like a fly or do you devise something yourself 
How could I find a device that brings that about, she asked. You could do it much more naturally than a spider. You know how spiders hunt to support themselves. They spin fine webs and feed on anything that flies into them. Are you advising me to weave some kind of snare too, she asked. No, you mustn't expect to hunt friends who are the most valuable prey of all, as simply as that. Don't you see that even in hunting common game like hares, people use various methods. In the first place, hares feed at night, so hunters provide themselves with hounds trained for night work. And the hunt, and the hunt with them, and the hunt with them with these, and hunt with them with these. Then because hares run away from the feeding grounds when the day come, they acquire other hounds which find them by picking up the scent from the trail that they leave from the feeding grounds to their forms. Then because they are swift footed so that they can escape by running even when, they, when sighted, the hunters further supply themselves with swift hounds to run them down. And because some of the hares escape even from these, nets are set up to escape to, in their escape paths so that the hares may run into them and get entangled. Well, said Theodi, what method like that might I use to catch friends? Surely by providing yourself with a human hound who will track down men of wealth and good taste and after finding them, devise means of driving them into your nets. Nets, she said. What nets have I got? One certainly, said Socrates, which is very close enfolding your body, and it is in your mind, which teaches you how to look charming and talk gaily, and tells you that you must give a warm welcome to an attentive lover, but bolt the door against a selfish one, if a lover falls ill, you must look after him devotedly, that if he has a stroke of luck, you must share in his pleasure enthusiastically, and that if he cares for you deeply, you must gratify him wholeheartedly. As for loving, I'm sure that you know how to love not only passively, but with real affection, and you convince your lovers that you are fond of them. I know not by words, but by deeds. Honestly, said Theodi, I don't use any of these methods. Then again, said Socrates, it is much better to keep one's human relationships natural and right. You can't capture or keep a friend by force, but by showing the creature kindness and giving it pleasure. You can both catch it and keep it by you. That's true, she said. So in the first place, says Socrates, when people care for you, you should make only demands of them as they can satisfy with a minimum of trouble. Then you should repay their favors in kind. In this way, you are likely to become most attached. They are most, in this way, they are most likely to become most attached to you, to go on loving you for the longest time and to be most generous to you. And you are likely to give them the most pleasure if you bestow what you have to give only when they ask for it. You can see that even the most delightful dishes seem disagreeable if they are served before the appetite is ready. And when one is satiated, they naturally cause disgust. And if one is satiated, they naturally cause disgust. But even inferior food seems quite attractive if it is served after hunger is aroused. Very well, she said. How am I to arouse hunger for what I have to give? Why, surely, says Socrates, if when your admirers are satiated, you offer neither you offer nor hint at your favors until the satisfaction has passed and they feel the one again. And next, when they feel, and next, 
when they most feel the want. If you drop hints by a combination of the most modest behavior and obviously wanting to gratify them and by obviously holding back until their need is as great as possible for the same favors are much better than before the desire for them is aroused. Theode said, why don't you help me in my hunt for friends, Socrates? I will believe me, says Socrates, if you persuade me. How can I persuade you? You will have to look to yourself. And he said, if you will find a way and you will find a way if you need any help from me. Then come see me often, she said. Well, Theode replied, Socrates. <laughs> well, Theode replied, Socrates, poking fun at his own avoidance of public life. It is not easy for me to find time for it. I have a great deal of private and public business that keeps me occupied. I have some girlfriends, too who never let me leave them by day or night. And because they are learning from me about love charms and spells. Do you really know about them too, Socrates? She asked. Why do you suppose that Apollodorus here and Antithenes never leave me and that Sebes and Simeus come to visit me from Thebes? You may be sure that these things don't happen without a lot of love charms and spells and magic wheels. Lend me your magic wheel so that I may spin it first for you. Certainly not, he said. I don't want to be drawn to you. I want you to come to me. Very well, I will, she declared. Only mind you let me in. Yes, I will let you in, said Socrates unless I have someone with me that I like better. I know that was kind of like long and drawn out, but I just wanted to read that to you from Socrates. I mean, from Xenophon about Socrates, just in case you never really heard some Socrates conversation. You understand me? I fucked up a little bit, but I was trying to flow and glow for y'all niggas. All right. I have some observations, man. I want to make a couple of observations, man. Um, I want to talk about putting pressure on bitches, man. I, and I had one of my peoples reach out to the ball smack top soil and he was telling me how he had put it pressure on a bitch and and the results that he had gotten and, and he was enthusiastic about it and I rejoiced with him. And um, you know, I'm for putting pressure on bitches, man. You gotta always put pressure on bitches. You understand me? Because life is putting pressure on you, nigga. And to be that nigga um, is hard. To be that nigga is hard. And, and and when you that nigga, you gotta put pressure on the bitch, bro. Period. You gotta put pressure on bitches. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm talking about? You gotta put pressure on bitches. You can't be. You can't. You know. Now, how do you put pressure on bitches? Niggas is like, how do you put pressure on bitches? Well, I tell you. You put pressure on bitches by being your best self at all times. Be your best self. That's the beginning of the pressure on bitches. Being your best self, taking care of yourself, staying on point, staying mentally focused, clear. Being your best self. Staying crispy, staying looking good, smelling good, staying crispy. That's the first level of pressure because that right there is going to make other, bitch, other bitches is checking for you because you're looking great, you're smelling great, you're radiating good energy. Just, just that is pressure. You know what I'm talking about? 
Oh shit. This status pressure. Y'all am I to get some espresso going, man, you know. Got that good crema on there. Oh God. That motherfucking machine make espresso better than Starbucks. I have fucking proven it already. I have went to Starbucks and got what I usually get, like about four shots on ice, brought it back. Then I made me four shots on ice and I put it in there, man. And it's a, hey, man, it's not no competition. But anyway. Put pressure on bitches. Being your best self is putting pressure on bitches, nigga. Going to get you some new Air Max, putting pressure on bitches. Walking around crispy feet is pressure on bitches man staying crispy looking good is pressure on bitches you take it up to another level don't be thirsty not being thirsty is pressure on bitches being around a bitch radiating potent mat potent real nigga energy and not being thirsty man oh my god niggas do not hear me talking niggas don't hear me talking niggas don't hear me talking Niggas is it's thirsty world, man. Niggas will never, ever, ever fuck with what I'm talking about. Thirsty motherfuckers. Man. Not being thirsty is pressure and and then start showing bitches other bitches. Oh my god. Start don't don't hold back. See a lot of niggas get caught up in this bullshit right here. Let me show you some bullshit you, that you get caught up in. A lot of niggas get caught up in the implied monogamy agreements with bitches. Impl uh, implied monogamy agreements with bitches. That means you kick it with a bitch a couple of times. You may fuck, and then all of a sudden a bitch is imagining that y'all monogamous already. Man. You know what I'm saying? Let bitches see bitches. Let bitches see bitches. Let bitches see bitches. You know what I'm saying? Evidence, let, that, let it be seen. There's so many ways to get it off. You know, so many ways to get it off. Got to keep that pressure up, man. You can't never take it off. You got to keep a bitch in a perpetual state of worried about another bitch that's going to steal you all the way to your deathbed, nigga. Even on your deathbed, you got to look like a pimp. Nigga, you got to look like, hey, bitch, if you leave out of this room while I'm dying, a bitch might come in and try to put me on the team bit. man I miss my G-Pops man my G-Pops was um, that nigga was was the nigga all the way to the end I miss that nigga cold nigga cold nigga cold nigga yeah man Put pressure on bitches, man. I got another observation. I want to talk about this, man. Um, um, I was thinking, man, um, as an old nigga living my life where I'm at now, um, where I came from, youngin'. And you know, I, I, I was I was reflecting on some um I was reflecting on some um first glimpses of the game. First glimpses of the game. 
and I was thinking about it. And it's crazy, man. I'm going to tell y'all a story, man. Um, first glimpse of the game. Deception. It started with deception. It just ended with Mac and just, it just was. It was just a beautiful ending of Mackin. You understand me? And um, how it's it's crazy. Fuck with me though. When the ball smacked topsoil was in high school, right? When the nigga was in the twelfth grade, I was I was pursuing um I, I I was you know I was pursuing a player status. I was I was in an active player mind state, but I had no um technical aspects of the game other than be crispy, wear high fashion um have more than one bitch right and um i knew back then i knew back then back then when i was in high school my my whole in a, in the 12th grade my philosophy was similar to like a, a, a old nigga a, a old nigga to where it was like you got to have different bitches at different high schools and back then you know it wasn't no social media so you know you could you could really parlay some shit you feel me so you know i but anyway i'm at i'm at compton i go to compton high school and um um my boy had came from carson one of my peoples my homie e and we was just fucking around one night. This is some, and, and, and mind you, this is, I'm a nigga who got bitches, right? I got multiple bitches. And E had a bitch. It was a bitch that he used to fuck with at Carson, right? Because he came from Carson. So it was a bitch that he used to fuck with at Carson. And a nigga played a joke. Um, um, for some reason, he, for some reason, I end up calling the bitch and acting like I was Eric and, and started like a whole fucking relationship with this bitch. Like I'm Eric. You feel me? So like I'm on the phone, like I'm talking, I talk, I probably talked to the bitch about two weeks straight. Like I'm Eric. I mean, a whole rela like, like, this is some fucked up shit I'm doing, right? So I got in, and I got bit. Listen, it ain't like I'm out here. I don't even know why I'm doing this shit. I it ain't like I'm. I got a. I got. I got. I had a. I, I had like three bitches that I was trying to figure out who I was gonna take to the prom. You feel me? Plus, plus this, just doing this for fun, right? So then I was like, man, what the fuck am I doing, man? And then, and then um, I think I, I like we was in like we was in a relationship. I ain't never seen the bitch. I'm pretending like I'm Eric. We I ain't seen it. We in a we like we like we like in a relationship like. So then I was like, man, what the fuck am I doing? Some bullshit, man. This is, let me just. So I just called up. I was like, listen here, man. Look. I 
my name is James. I'm, you know, I was just, I'm Eric, homie. I'm just bullshitting, man. We just been fucking around on the plane. Uh, you seem like a nice cool. I don't even know why we did that shit. I'm sorry. And then she was like, fuck it. Fuck with me. Like, uh, come through. Let's kick it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, take me to my prom. Take me, take me to the car. And this is a cool, this is a cool looking bitch. This ain't no ugly bitch. This is a cool looking bitch. Take me to my prom. I'm like, well, shit, I'm already going to. I got, I'm already, I'm already, I'm already put tuck money away from my shit. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to my prom. I got, you know, I didn't save money for my, my limo, my tux, all that shit for my prom. You feel me? She was like, no, I'll pay for everything for you. Everything. That bitch paid for everything. And the motherfucking, now, let me, let me draw a comparison. Carson Prime versus Compton High School Prime that year. Carson Prime crushed my prime. To even have, like, we went to Carson Prime and it was just massive, dope, beautiful. It was it was the shit by the airport. I think it was at the airport by the airport at the, I forgot what it was, Sheraton by the airport. I don't know what the fuck it was. It was just dope. Bomb, ah, uh, uh, lit, lit. I didn't know, I didn't know nobody at that motherfucker. I hated they football team because they beat the shit out of us in football that year, but. That shit was dope. For free. Then I went to my shit. And paid. And that shit was horrible. I could have just not went to my prime. I could have just. You know what? Give me all of that back. Fuck. Fuck the Compton prime. Shit. What? <laughs> the Mac and the Mac and the truth, the hitting the bitch with the true facts, stopping the bullshit. All right, look, bitch, that's the facts. I'm this, this, that, this, this, this. Take me to my prime. That was my first. That was that was that was a very very clear glimpse at the game right there. Very clear. Very clear. Very clear. I shared a limo. I shared a limo to my prime and paid. And I was with the homie. Me and my homie shared a limo, which was cool. It was still lit. Nigga, I was by myself in the prime. <laughs> I didn't pay. Like we was, we was in some higher level shit. Glimpse at the gang. Glimpse at the gang, you know, young nigga. All right, y'all. All right, all right, all right, all right. Where we at? How, how much time we got? Let me see. What we doing? Okay. Reader, listener, email. Reader, listener, email. And um, let's do it. Now this, 
I thought this was a very interesting email. Um, you know, um, feel me. A nigga from Los Angeles writes the ball smack. He say ball smack. I'm a nigga out here with a house and a few whips. However, I'm a nigga out here with really one bitch on the team and many bitches that want to fuck with me. But I just realized my main bitch is fucking with at least two other niggas. One is an older, lame, square nigga that I think she might be milking. And another nigga is a, 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 is a nigga that's on my level. And I'm kind of worried about him. I found out this shit. Because I switched cars with my people and I followed the bitch for three days. I have maintained my composure and not let it be known. I don't want to lose my bitch. Is there a way I could tighten up my game in my position? I think I may have become addicted to the pussy. Shaking my head. All right. So, um, it's, you know, sometimes, man, it's shocking to find out that you are in the bitches stable like the bit you when you find out that the bitch is running a stable and you in it you be really be like wow I'm, wow i'm in the stable it's hard to really because when you find out you in the stable it's like You, you think she's cheating. You you just perceive it as maybe the end is coming. She's, she's cheating on me and she's getting tired of me or some shit like that. But you, but you really, you really in the rotation. You, you, you just really in her rotation. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's real out here. It's bitches with stables. Bro, you be in a bitch's stable. You know what I'm saying? And um, so what you're saying is really how, how can I get her to focus on only me in the stable? Right? Well, I would say, you know, on the real as a challenge as a, see cuz that's a that's a good challenge that's a good challenge right i would say the first thing you do is you should you should have already had been rationing dick you know what i'm saying but if you're not rationing dick you giving dick on demand and then probably going into a domain of where she can she knows in her spirit and soul that you are addicted to this pussy and you're not going nowhere see the only thing you could do 
is to take dick off the table. You have to take dick off the table and act like that you didn't take dick off the table. You gotta just really be like, I, I I would go into an active build up the team mode. I would be building the team actively. The best the best thing to do is to start building subversively. Start building subversively because she's subversive right now. Start building subversively. Take dick off the table. Don't even, don't even, don't, don't, don't even ask for no more pussy. Don't even show, don't show no, keep it all love and happy. Everything good, you know, when you talk to her, but just to remove dick from the table, bro. Like, like, just be like, you know, you, you get dick from elsewhere. So, you know, you know, and then start trying to build and spend and start fucking with some other bitches. And she will feel that in her spirit that you are, that your attention is div- is now divided. Bitches can tell on a spiritual level when you are really fucking with some other bitches. Deep in their soul, they can feel it. If they got some real comp out here, you got some other bitches on the team that's working in, you distracted. You There is a, you're going to be distracted. You're going to be distracted. And bitches drink the the attention energy that you give a bitch. She's drinking it. So if you if you reduce the attention energy, you feel me? And start, you know, building with some other bitches and 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 and, and, and hey man, reserve just be like, "Hey man, I, Shit, man, it might have been your last time fucking. Remove dick from the table, bro. And that's like a hard one right there, man. That one is so hard that that's like telling a nigga to walk on water out this motherfucker. <laughs> Take dick off the table. A lot of bitches be like so confident they know the bitch just, bitch just uh, tackle you, man, and you just uh, fuck her. You have no, you don't have the abilities to be able to like straight arm a bitch off of you. Be like, look, bitch. I don't feel like fucking today. Maybe tomorrow, bitch. I don't know, man. I'm for the ruckus in the bullshit, bro. Like, I'm for the ruckus in the bullshit, bro. At all times. People only act right when shit is fucked up, man. It don't, it don't never, shit ain't never smooth unless it's just some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me take a last glimpse at, um, let me take a last glimpse at, uh, some news and see if I got anything I could throw up on the way out. And uh, oh, Cardi B and uh, Offset. Cardi B and Offset. Shout out to uh, Cardi B. Happy birthday, uh, Cardi B. Had a birthday. It was dope. Um, Cardi B birthday. Shout out to Cardi B. Uh, Offset came through and gave a bitch a a Rolls Royce and um, some other shit. Then I think he's posted something talking about he won or some shit like that. I want I want niggas to keep their eye on that. See if uh Cardi B just take in the roles. 
still divorce a nigga. I want to say shout out to Dr. Dre. Uh, look like his wife is under investigation for embezzling three hundred and eighty-five thousand. She embezzled three hundred and eighty-five thousand. Riding bitch, bro. Riding bitches, man. You just be living with a bitch all them years, and the bitch is rotten the whole motherfucking time, man. Can you imagine just live with a bitch the whole motherfucking time? What the fuck? What the fuck, bro? All right, ball smack top soil, y'all. I'm out of here, man. I'm gonna I'm cut it off right here, man. Try to get the homie in here, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming out. The Top Mac Nigga Show is a Ball Smack Industries production. Put your hands together for a special musical guest. I ain't gonna even say no name.